This episode of Bonfire Side Chat is brought to you by our patrons at Patreon. If you go to patreon.com forward slash duckfeedtv, you too can join the many awesome people who have decided to kick us a couple bucks a month in order to keep this show from costing us tons of money and uh, buy equipment and, um, you know, more or less make this not difficult for us. So we really appreciate that. Uh, head on over to patreon.com forward slash duckfeedtv and check it out. Some of our landings were desperate adventures. We are now prepared to meet the inevitable counterattacks with power and with confidence. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Bonfire Side Chat Appendix, an undead appendix. <laughs> and this week we are reading your responses to the Crown of the Sunken King DLC. Angelica could not join us for this, but uh, we uh, thank her tremendously for appearing on the main episode. Yeah, she had chili <laughs> yeah. to get to several times during the recording. She was talking about this chili she was making, mm-hmm. and it sounded amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would ask her to ship me some if she wouldn't have to ship it from Sweden, yeah. <laughs> and it would uh, probably have gone yeah. gone terribly wrong yeah. in yeah. transit. I, I, I'm not a religious man, but I'm a man of ethics and principles, and I will not stand between a person and their chili. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's about ethics and chili. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so we're, we're reading your responses uh, about the Krunk and Sing. Uh, Krunk and Sing. <laughs> <laughs> you think I've got to put a marker there, but I am not. <laughs> Crunk and sing. Um, <laughs> let's all let's all go down to the east side for some crunk and sing. Um, um, sip and perp yeah. out of the Lord vessel. S- sip and perp and crunk and sing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Good on you, man. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I chalk that up to being sleepy. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's nearly 11 a.m. here. I should be in bed for another three or four hours. <laughs> Student life, skateboards, guitar <laughs> licks. Um, <laughs> Doing rad kick flips. Kick flips into bed. Staying in bed all the time. <laughs> doing, <laughs> sleeping 12 hours a day. <laughs> doing, um, doing, rad, <laughs> doing rad kick flips over where your alarm clock should be. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> yes, you, you are recording much earlier than you yeah. usually do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I'll get a, uh, go ahead and get us started with Vivian. Cool. Yeah, so this is follow-up. This is responses to things that we uh, said in previous episodes. Uh, Vivian writes in via Facebook saying, Ben Hart is totally Dark Souls 2's Solaire, uh, both due to gameplay the to the gameplay function you identify in the podcast and because thematically he uses the exact same techniques as Solaire. Faith in something that everyone else thinks is nonsense, an upbeat attitude, and jolly cooperation with other undead uh, to survive and to avoid going hollow and to cross the finish line with the PC. I feel like this was even intended for whatever that was worth, and the extent to which he's less charming is a mixture of the game's poorer writing and dialogue, uh, and his sense of disconnectedness from any of the covenants or larger lore beats, whereas Solaire is also basically the symbolic champion of one of the two prevailing philosophies, Sunbro versus Darkrath, uh, that become critical conclusions about the nature of humanity and represent the two endings. Yeah. Very well put. Yeah, well, well put indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything to, to add to that. Right. Um, no. um, yeah, so thank you, Viv. Mm-hmm. Uh, Etienne uh, says via con- con- comment, um, the dragon memory in the dragon is actually of Majula. In the program where you can see the collision data, they're in the exact same spot, and they share exactly the same data. The rock in front of the blacksmith is in the memory. Uh, the dead dragon would be behind the blacksmith's store. Had no idea. Yeah, I have no idea about that. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's significant or if it's just uh, expedient. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like it could be some ancient and primordial version of the spot that would eventually become Majula. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm down with that. Yeah, I, very I don't. Well could be. I don't know how this. If this is indeed the dead, the dead dragon, I don't know how his corpse got from there to the depths of Seldora. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I tend to because it looks so different, like my thought would be that it's reusing access assets. Yeah. Um, but it could be either way. Yeah. So yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Interesting, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, residual toast writes in via con- uh, via comment uh, on the pages. You can you can go to each like pages show uh, page, each episode's post on the blog, and leave comments. That's where these are coming from. Uh, he says or or she. Uh, one thing I don't believe you mentioned is the fact that the book in the mansion uh, is on top of a pile of junk in one of the giant memories. Uh, I think the one with Drummond. Not sure what this means, whether it was originally in the keep or with the giants or something else, but it's still interesting. So that is a that is an asset that shows up both in, Maj- in the mansion in Majula and also in the giant memories. Wait, I, I don't know if I've ever noticed that. Do you know where it's at in the giant memories? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I should I should try to find that because yeah. that that is interesting. Yeah. Um, because that book has been like long, you know, has been a vessel for us to put <laughs> discarded and and half hearted lore ideas. And Al, and Aldia's uh, book did it. Yeah. Yeah, Aldia's uh, it was Aldia somehow. But like, I, yeah, I've never seen that before. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. I'll have to look that up as well. Yeah. Um, so on to the uh, responses. Uh, DJ Davis says via Facebook, I'll keep it brief. This is the best area in Dark Souls 2 and pretty much made me interested in the game again. It is a masterpiece of design, mood, systems, and atmosphere. Yeah. The, the, the mood and atmosphere is great. We didn't speak too much about it in the in the main episode uh, because it was going to be a long one anyway. But I love kind of the Cyclopean architecture of this. Yeah. It, it feels separate from and distinct from uh, from from pretty much everything else. And and of a piece, mm-hmm. like as of one, you know, it looks like the same culture mm-hmm. made it, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like it a lot. It is actually, I think, on the balance, probably my least favorite of the DLCs. Mm. Um, I really love it, but I, uh, I I think that it is not not my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, but that just makes me excited to talk <laughs> about why in the uh, the upcoming episodes. Yeah. And, so. and, and still on its own merit without comparison to the oh, other yeah, ones, it's, it's still it's great. It's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's still great. But I mean, I'm a, I'm a Dark Souls 2 uh, noted apologist white knight scumbag <laughs> um, for Dark Souls 2. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Uh, moving on to Jeremy Greer, our good friend, uh, writes in via Facebook saying, um, I'm curious if either one of y'all beat the optional bosses uh, solo. I simply couldn't do it, and I know all of the tricks to keep them apart and give myself uh, space to flask. Sin is up there as one of my favorite boss fights, though. I co opt there for hours after finishing it up the first time. Um, yeah, I, I soloed him once, mm-hmm. um, and it was it's a war of attrition. Like, it's not a very fun fight solo. Mm-hmm. And I was using like healing items that like no one uses. Like, I'm just like pounding <laughs> rogue water and dragon charms and shit. Is, is it rogue water or rouge water? Because I, I think, think it's, it's, it's rouge I think it's water. Rouge water. Yeah. yeah. And just, I'm just pounding like these weird healing items, like dried roots. <laughs> yeah. And to make a noticeable effect, you have to take like six dried roots yeah. for them yeah. to stack enough to be noticeable. But like I would do it because that's what you had to do. Again, that's a, that's a detail we missed in the, in the main, in the main episode, but there are like, there are like seven chests uh, in the lead mm-hmm. up to the cave of the dead. And each of them like has uh, increasing numbers of dried roots inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which are, which is just a very slow healing item. Mm hmm. Very, very slow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I agree with Sin. I think Sin is right up there w- uh, for me, actually. Yeah, like, Sin's really good. Yeah. Yes. Out of the the deals, the boss fights in this DLC, mm-hmm. it's it's far and above the best one, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And it's and, and it's probably, I would hazard, it's probably better than any of them in the third DLC. Hmm. But uh, there are ones in the second DLC I like a little bit better. Yeah, um, yeah. So I didn't co-op any of the uh, any of the. Or sorry, I co-opted all of the fights um, mm-hmm. in, in this because I feel like uh, they they were designed for that. You yeah, know, not, when, nothing wrong with when, that. When, when the boss summons help, I have no compunction about summoning help myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Jeremy, and happy birthday, happy belated birthday, Jeremy. Oh, um, yeah. Just uh, just recently, I told him on Facebook to go fuck himself because <laughs> uh, that's why I tell people on their birthday. Um, so uh, Jeff uh, Denginger. Uh, says via Facebook, uh, my favorite things about the Sunken King, Sin's breathing when first entering, chilling the first time, and sad each time afterwards. Puzzles plus Dark Souls equal The Legend of Zelda, but entirely better. Finally, a dragon boss that feels like a dragon boss. A true sense of endgame in PvE Dark Souls. Uh, for example, or i.e. tough encounters with lots of enemies, challenging areas, and overall tougher than the main story. Mm-hmm. My least favorite things about the Sun King, um, infinite poise to fuck over melee builds, big groups of infinite poise enemies, <laughs> that one boss that is magically two, uh, doing it in New Game Plus for the first time, Uh-oh. lots of... Hmm? Oh, no. Oh, no, I thought you were cut out for a second. No, no. no. Um, yeah. The, uh, lots of new stuff and very little worth keeping. Temporary stat boost on items, even though I'm already at 50, and the gank squad, which took forever to beat them so low. Yeah. That poise thing is a little bit of a, I, I don't know. I, it, it's it's one of those things where you say, well, just adapt to it, but I don't know how you do that, aside from just change your movements. You you, you just you, you block and attack. 
Like you just don't, you just don't press the attack as much. Yeah. Like, um, like I, I never thought those guys were that bad. They're, they're really hard. I went down there with, um, a twin blade once I had this like aborted dex run and, uh, the twin blade plain twin blade is absolute hot garbage <laughs> and does no damage. And those ones I would die just from losing patience, mm-hmm. um, because I just, chipped away at them even when attacking them unblocked but just uh they become like um like i had to slip back into like old dark souls mode where like you know i i'm super careful and keep my shield up and just attack when they wound down and then you can adapt yeah um it just it it, like i the infinite poise thing doesn't bother me that much Mm -hmm. about those guys like it is not infinite like that you can break their poise actually um and you can guard break them too if you'd rather do that um but they're super easy to backstab Mm -hmm. um yeah, I don't know. Those guys never bother me that much. It gets tricky, though, with the poison ones, which we didn't talk about that much in the main episode. But I really like that because with the first ones, they seem like they're training you to backstab because that's mm-hmm. the way to get around their things. And these ones just poison you by being around them. Yeah. So you can go backstab them, but it is that comes with a cost. Right. Yeah. yeah. It didn't particularly like gum up my works either, the, 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 the high poise thing. But I can see that as a, as a weak spot for certain builds, you know. Yeah, I think that my <laughs> my quarrel lies with just how little damage any of my attacks did. It felt like it was a numbers thing more than anything yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, they are they are really uh, really strong, really resilient. Again, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Matt writes in via uh, via the contact form at uh, DuckFeedTV slash contact, uh, saying, um, "I love the way that uh, simple addition of moving terrain pieces changes up the gameplay in the Sunken King. The stress of trying to time your jumps onto moving towers for fear of missing them." Uh, or for, sorry, for fear of missing an item uh, just out of your reach really evokes a feeling of, now that's some good Dark Souls. Also, traps. I'm a pretty big fan of D&D, so I got pretty hyped about the Sanctum itself as a dungeon. Can we talk about Alana, though? Um, I like her for the same reason as Nashandra, being that her uh, that their actual designs are refreshing and that we have female lich-type characters who aren't weird boob skeletons. Um, on the other hand, she is uh, is she another deceptive queen? Um, I thought so at first, but it seemed to me uh, that Nashandra did what she did because she was the want shard of Manus, uh, while Alana is all about vengeance. Uh, maybe I don't have a complete understanding of what went down in Shulva, but I'm not convinced that she's responsible for the downfall. She seemed to be more of a Maiden Astrea type character. I mean, sure, maybe she summons the Velstat lookalike because the developers were recycling assets, but I like the idea of Alana as a, as a benevolent figure who still cared about her city, even when it became a bad neighborhood amongst bad neighborhoods. Hmm. Yeah. So that is interesting. I, I did not get that. I think Alana is pretty malicious. Yeah. Um, personally. Um, and I'm curious, like, I, I just want to have, like, it's, Excuse me. Um, all the people who write in about this DLC, I just want to know if they play the other ones and talk to them about that because, like, <laughs> they change my, you know, they, it, they reflect on each other in a way, mm-hmm. specifically with the, the different daughters of Manus. Yeah. Um, and, and their aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really, in a way, that's very flattering to Dark Souls 2. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's actually really cool. So, like, I don't consider her that way. I do think that she, and that's why it was weird to me that they led with her because we have. The, the greedy character of want and then the angry character of wrath that both are just very, you know, kind of endlessly hostile towards you mm-hmm. um, right next to each other. Yeah. Before they start messing with that formula a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. So if she, if, if she is the spirit of vengeance, right. Uh, what is she trying to avenge in, in his, you know, in, in, in oh, sorry, in, in Matt's view, uh, uh, what, what she would be most likely looking for revenge for is the attack on sin. Right. Mm hmm like biding her time and just, you know, making this place as hostile as possible to the outside world to, you know, to, to, to get revenge for that. But right. That doesn't square up with her trying to harvest, like, you know, talking about, you don't deserve this mire, you know, the souls, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like she's definitely taking advantage of sin in some way, Yeah, like sucking souls out of sin or using him to gain power. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know exactly. Um, but yeah, she does not seem like a, a good character to me personally. But that's just me. Um, thank you, though, Matt. Uh, Cyan via Contact says, The Sunken King DLC was a welcome to return to Dark Souls after completing the game, and as I'm sure you've already said, an extremely well-designed area. Jester Thomas is introduced uh, as the first clever invader, and the untouchable guards are cruel but very fun to finally defeat. That being said, some bosses could have done with a little bit of tweaking. The Grave Robber trio were fun but a little uninspired. I was very grateful for the area in which you fight them, and a lot of the time was spent kiting them around. 
As for Alana, I have a personal rule as I play through these games, to not summon people. But that goes right out the window when the designers do something that I think is seriously unfair. Summoning Valsite to fight alongside you, that is unfair. <laughs> but once I finally scraped through that, and with a little help from my friends, I had a lot of fun with Sin and a lot more fun sun sunburning against him. All in all, a good start to some very interesting DLC areas. Yeah, no disagreements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, let's wrap everything up with Sean here, who writes in saying, my, no my most notable uh, experience with this DLC involves one jester and two fiery balls. Watch Act out. <laughs> Act one. Yesterday, my friend and I were co oping of the DLC on Xbox. I had played on PC, and my sorcerer was to the point where Jester Thomas invades, having died countless times by myself with others to that fiery clown. With wrath in my heart, I got my friend to Jester Thomas in the DLC. It took three tries, and I still died as a summon on the third try, but we were victorious. Act 2. Now it was time to put down the bloody joker in my own game. Um, we breezed through, uh, we, we breezed through to him. I was nervous as I approached, remembering my past experience, realizing I was holding 50,000 souls with no safety net. I entered the room. He invaded. My friend leapt forward to stun lock him. I charged forward. Murakomo raised above my head. As we reached the terminal distance, he threw down a fire store and vanished. The geysers of flame leapt, uh, for but a moment and were gone. My friend knelt beside me, slain. I stood there, dumbfounded. Jester Thomas was gone. I went beyond the fog to the next bonfire. I returned to the Blazing Harlequins Hall, and he was not there. He would not grant me the satisfaction of fighting him, expelling him from my world. He simply walked away, robbing me of victory against him. Act three. I hate you, Jester Thomas, almost as much as I love you. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so he yeah. just he just up and done gone? Yeah, I've never seen that happen before. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, killing him is satisfying. Like, it is It is a harrowing fight. Yeah. So I'm sorry yeah, I didn't and, get that. And it's a real fuck you to put that um, the bonfire, you know, it's after him, but there's a couple guys that could easily kill you mm -hmm. afterwards, and uh, he's, he's tough. Yeah. Um, yeah, it did It did feel super good mm -hmm. to destroy that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, I can't wait to talk about the, the other Phantoms <laughs> and the other DLCs. I know this sounds like I'm just like, I can't wait to talk about this other thing. Uh -huh. Like the whole time we've been recording, but yeah. they do such cool tricks with the, the Phantoms and the third one. Yeah. Like part of this is me just wanting you to do it, Cole. Yeah. Like yeah. I well, want you to get to the third one so we can talk about those Phantoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I <laughs> don't, don't put me on blast. No. I'm not putting I, you on blast. Yeah, it's because I, I want to talk to you about it. Oh, it's not yeah, like a bad thing. Yeah. 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 I just didn't know. I, 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 I'm characterizing it that way because I feel bad that I haven't done it yet. Man, Elana just dispirited me so much that I was just kind of like, I'm going to wait for them all to come out so I can hit them all in one gasp. And then yeah. I didn't beat her until, you know, last night. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I, I feel like I've, you know, I failed on my duties a little bit, but uh, I, I, I feel like I have momentum now to work toward that. And I'm like, I'm like two thirds of the way through the Iron King DLC. So that's, that's fine. I think that, I think that uh, this, this does something good. Uh, for the show, which is to build this up and to kind of walk people through the experience of, you know, uh, you know, hitting them in the order that they that, that, that they came out and seeing how they build on each other and uh, elaborate. Right. Yeah. And you'll and you'll have it more fresh in your memory. Yep. Which is good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah. If you have things to say about that Iron King DLC, which hopefully you do, <laughs> um, hit us up at duckfeed.tv forward slash contact mm -hmm. um, or on our Facebook page yep. or any number of places. Yeah. We're going to be joined by Jason Killingsworth uh, from Riot, uh, formerly yeah. of Edge, next time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, about the responses on this episode, we're recording this uh, much earlier than we usually do. And so there was kind of a last minute call for responses. Thank you, everybody who uh, who uh, threw in uh, at the last minute there. It was very helpful. Um, if you still have thoughts about um, Sunken King, go ahead and send them in. We'll probably work it into a follow up at some point just to, to, to give you an opportunity. But uh, uh, no guarantees on that. I, I just want to yeah. make sure everybody has a uh, has an opportunity to say a thing. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a good chance. Yep. Um, yeah, I want to say thank you again to Angelica mm -hmm. uh, for joining us during the first uh, main episode. Yep. She is a delight. And um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, our, our Patreon, mm -hmm. go to uh, patreon.com forward slash duckfeed TV yep. and uh, hook us up with a couple of bucks a month. Yeah. You'll get cool stuff and we really appreciate it. Definitely. Uh, help us help us get the uh, the PS4s that we need to play. Uh, uh... Help us help you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just, just to say it on the. Help, help us help you. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd rather um, we not say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Help me help them help us. It just helps all around. Yeah, it's, it is helps. It's all full around. of helps. It's got helps, Gary. 
Yeah. Oh my God. It's full of helps. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And uh, do, delete scenes. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. And I've had some wine, so it's like Saturday <laughs> evening here. So I'm, I'm in a pretty good mood. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've also had some wine. I, I've, had, I've had my 8 a.m. My rise and shine drink port wine. Is Obviously, what they say. And, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like to throw a little wine in my coffee. Yeah, it's oh. just a, it's, yeah, I like to I like to throw a little bit of wine in my orange juice. I call it poor man's sangria. Yeah, yeah. Aww. It's a uh, almost a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. I have two cats which like love attention, so <laughs> they usually go like in front of the screen or behind my screen or like so if i start yelling at my cats it's not you guys it's my cats <laughs> i i appreciate it. your cats aren't named gary and cole are they <laughs> because if so that'll be really confusing <laughs> if you start yelling well, they're at not they're bob okay. and dante oh, okay hmm. yeah i've got i've got so. a cat uh, haunting around here somewhere too so maybe we can get them to talk to each other and yeah maybe it'll, it'll be a cute little, little yeah. moment And we all pray that we will have far more soon 